If we could please say, share a word of prayer uh, just before we, we proceed. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. The entrance of your word brings light and gives understanding to the simple. We ask tonight, Jesus, that by the power of your grace, you will brighten the dark places of our hearts by the entrance of your word, and you will give us wisdom to make us that which you have proposed us to be. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Tonight we want to share, uh, of, within the time limit that we have been given, uh, the subject that the man of God had um, had declared to us earlier, the place of vision in the actualization of destiny. Now, just for operational definition purposes, it's important to operationalize the two key words in that topic, vision and destiny. It's very important so that we know what we're talking about. If we do not appropriately define it, uh, for the purposes of this session tonight, um, I may be describing one thing, somebody else may be hearing another. But therefore, by the grace of God, vision for the purpose of our discussion tonight is the faculty or state of being able to see. Faculty or state of being able to see, being able to think about, and being able to plan the future with imagination and with wisdom. I'm going to go over that again because every single word in that definition is important for what the Lord will be sharing with us tonight. Because each of us must take each of those key words and look at them. And then we'll see how that relates to our life. And by the grace of God, we hope to be able to point out, each of us should be able to examine ourselves in the light of this word, to see the areas where we, have, uh, we could do things differently and see what we could improve upon so that we can have, we can be the best version of ourselves by the grace of God. Vision, the faculty or state of being able to see, being able to think about a plan and being able to plan the future with imagination. So as far as vision is concerned, everywhere we talk about vision tonight, remember, we're talking about a state or the faculty or a state of being able to see the future, being able to think about the future, being able to plan the future with a lot of imagination and, of course, with wisdom. Now, wisdom is the application of knowledge. So that's why I say every single word in that definition is important to us. So ability to see the future, ability to plan the future, Ability to imagine the future with wisdom, to apply the knowledge that you have acquired, to appropriately apply information that you have for results in specific situations. So vision. So now, when we talk about destiny, we're talking about purpose. Now, the word destiny means different things to different people. And depending on the context of the usage, it will correctly, of course, mean different things. But for operational purposes, the context of our usage of the word destiny tonight is talking about the predetermined or the possible purposes that God has made available to you. The, the reason dirt, the reason for which you were born, the, 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 the final end, the value that God created you to add to your world, the very essence of your person, that which makes you you, that way makes you who you are. The real reason that you are here. That's what we're talking about as destiny. Destiny tonight is not talking about that thing which cannot be changed, which has been written, therefore cannot be changed. That's not what we're talking about tonight. When we make reference to destiny tonight, we make reference to that big place called there that you want to get to in life. The purpose of your life, the reason why you believe that God has created you and the value that God wants you to add to your world. Can we please go to the book of Proverbs chapter 29? Very popular scripture. Many of us can quote this by heart, but I'd like us to read it together tonight. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. 
For he that keepeth the law happy is he. Where there is no vision, the people perish. For he that keepeth the law happy is he. You will see the reason why this topic is very important to everyone, particularly to you, my listener and my viewer tonight. The Bible says vision is critical to the sustenance of life. As a matter of fact, breathing and living from day to day is a product of vision. It's a product of ability to see, to think, to plan about the future with imagination and, of course, with wisdom. Therefore, what we are hearing tonight is that if you are not able to see the future, if you are not able to plan the future, if you are not able to imagine the future, you are probably dying already. Therefore, the Bible says, anywhere vision does not exist, what exists there is death. What exists there is destruction. If there is no mental vision, people die mentally. If there is no uh, uh, strategic vision, people die strategically. So the Bible says, where there is no vision, people perish. Ideas perish. Desires perish. A lot of people today have wishes that they think is a vision. A, a vision is only a vision to the extent that you're able to picture it. You have an idea, imaginatively, an idea of what the end product looks like. You must have a strong desire that is so strong in your mind. When you have examined your life, you have examined the purpose of life for yourself. You have determined that this is the reason why you're here. It's important to have a clear vision of your destination in life, of where you are going, that so that when you get there, you know that this is what you were pursuing and now you are there. And the Bible says, irrespective of what you pursue in life, whether it is segmented goal or, 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 or strategic goal or tactical goals, when you are pursuing anything in life that is in the form of purpose, you need vision. You need vision. Without vision, you will not succeed. Now, what is very sad with a lot of us today, both Christians and non-Christians, is that we leave many things in the hands of God. We leave many things in the hands of the Holy Spirit. Things we leave in the hand of the Holy Spirit are the things that God has empowered us to take care of. And yet, we want God to do for us what we can easily do for ourselves. This is pure lack of vision. In, in management parlance, this is called upward delegation. Upward delegation. When you are delegating upward, when you are giving your boss, somebody who is superior to you, you're giving him work to do that you have been empowered to do. And that is why the life of many doesn't seem to be making progress. They seem to be rigmaroling, moving around on the same spot, all motion, no movement, because their life is unimaginative. Their life is visionless. Their life has no strategic pursuit, has no clear vision. Now, Therefore, children of God is very important. I want you to hear me very closely. And it doesn't matter what faith you subscribe to. Without vision, your life will be grounded. Without vision, your desires will become mere wishes. Wishes leave no, lead nobody nowhere. As a matter of fact, the English says, if wishes were horses, beggars might ride. Why do they say that? It's because wishes are not horses. They are not, their wishes don't take anybody anywhere. You sit down, you wish you were a millionaire. You wish you were an anointed preacher. You wish you owned a school. You wish you owned a business. You wish you had a degree. You wish you had a PhD. You wish you, wish you were able to overcome this sin. You wish you did this. You wish you did that. Those wishes don't take nobody nowhere until you convert them to a vision, until you convert them to an imaginative perception of an end, imaginative perception with which you plan for an end, an expected end, a future, a specific, definite future. And the Bible says, where this is absent, people perish. The reason why your ideas are perishing is because those ideas lack, lack vision. The reason why your wishes perish is because those wishes have no vision. When you have no vision, when you leave, attempt to live in the hands of God, what God has empowered you to do for yourself, you will demonstrate 
absolute lack of vision. The Bible says, as a matter of fact, according uh, by his divine power, Christ has given unto us all that pertains to life and godliness. Everything that we need to live life, everything that we need to succeed, everything that we need, we need to be godly. Everything that we need to be the best version of ourselves possible, the Bible says God has put in our hands. As a matter of fact, Psychologists stipulate that uh, behavior scientists say that 75% of what we become in, in life is dependent on our environment, things that we can control. Only 25% dependent on what we are born with. I'm going to take that again, meaning that as we pursue life, as we pursue purpose in life, as we seek to achieve objectives, as we seek to achieve strategic goals, as we seek to make something huge, something functional, as we seek to create value for ourselves in our world, that only 25% of that depends on God, on um, the way you are born, on the family into which you are born, on, on natural things, your your personal makeup, all those, only 25%. 75% of that are controllable, are placed in your environment, are a product of, of what you deliberately subject yourself to. So you see what God is saying? When the Bible says, I say ye are gods, and all of you sons of the living God, this is what Jesus is referring to, that to a very large extent, 75% of the capacity to make life work for yourself, God has placed in your hands. Therefore, distinguish and gentlemen, you need vision. You need a very clear vision of what tomorrow means for you, a very clear vision of what ministry means for you, a very clear vision of what business means for you, a very clear vision of what marriage means for you. Whatever it is that God is helping you to build, whatever it is that you want to build, you need a vision. I was listening to a man of God, Dr. Mensa Otabil, and he was talking about creating a 20-year vision, a 20-year vision. There are people who don't even have one-year vision, let alone 20-year vision. And without vision, your, your ideas will perish. Without vision, you're stagnated. You're not going anywhere. Now, very quickly, we're going to take two major case studies tonight to make the point that the Lord is going to help us to make. And I do hope that to a large extent, I've laid that foundation. I needed to lay that foundation so that I can whet your appetite as we travel along this journey tonight. Two case studies we're going to take tonight. Number one, the case study of Abraham. Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, I'm going to read from verses 1 to 3. Genesis chapter 12, if you have your Bible, you can open it with me. Genesis chapter 12, I'll take the reading from verse number one through to verse number three. I read it in the King James Version. Now, the Lord has said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you and cost them that cost you and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Ladies and gentlemen, look at the case of Abraham here. God makes Abraham a promise. That promise was not new. The same promise, a similar promise, I beg your pardon, God has made to you. In Jeremiah chapter 29, Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. God says, for I know the thought that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. I know the thought that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So to some of you listening to me tonight, you may think that is not profound. But let me put it in context. Here we are taking a case study of Father Abraham. It is easy for somebody to say, oh, uh, well, Abraham was a, a man selected by God. God gave him a special promise. And I'm telling you that God has also given you a similar special promise, saying, look, as far as I am concerned, it's a done deal. It shall be well with you. The capacity to grow, 
the capacity to make success out of life, the capacity to live a righteous life, the capacity to make heaven, the capacity to overcome unrighteousness, the capacity to grow a business, the capacity to get over poverty, the capacity to live beyond yourself, to be a blessing to people around you, the capacity to live a life of ethics, the capacity to, to, to govern appropriately, the capacity to lead your country well, the capacity to run your economy properly. I have given it to you. The thoughts I have towards you is not for you to be in trouble. The thoughts I have towards you is not for you to fail. The thoughts I have towards you is not for you to be sick. The thought I have towards you is not for you to die of illness. It's a it, it, it thought of peace and not of evil because there is an expected end which I am going to give you. Now, let's go back to Father Abraham in our case study. And I want us to look very closely at the nuances of the conversation between Abraham and Jehovah, our God. Now, I read that scripture again. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get out of your country and from your kindred and from your father's house unto a land which I will show you. Stay with us, gentlemen. God gave Abraham a prophecy and said, you are going to, I'm going to take you away from what you're familiar with. I'm going to take you from this environment of limited success. You are used to everybody having enough to eat. You are used to everybody having just one car. You are used to everybody committing sin and falling today and rising tomorrow. You are used to everybody saying, well, we are sinners. None of us is righteous. You're used to failed economy. You're used to borrowing. You are used to poor performance at work. You are used to business failure. You are used to renegotiating debts. You are used to creditors coming to knock at your door. That's your current environment. God said unto Abraham, I'm going to take you away from there. I'm going to take you away from this environment. There is a new environment that you must experience. And in the same thing God is telling you, that there is a new experience, there's a new environment that you can experience. I don't know what situation you are in today. I don't know what state your business is in. I don't know what state your marriage is in. I don't know what state your economy is. If you are a leader of a nation, I don't know what state your nation is in. Our nation, Nigeria, where I'm from, is in, is in a critical state today. State of insecurity, state of national division, state of tension, state of a lot of negative sentiment that has gripped our land. The economy is in very difficult shape right now. There are many people who are finding it difficult to make ends meet because investors are not investing at the rates at which the economy is required for things to grow. We are having a negative negative inflationary negative numbers in quarter after quarter so we're dancing around the edges of recession we're falling in and falling out maybe that's the environment that you are familiar with nations that do not work economies that do not work businesses that do not work marriages that do not work churches that do not work life personal christian life that do not work but god is saying i'm going to take you out of there there is a new experience that is available for you. There is a place where the economy works. There is a place of economic stability. There is a place of goodness. There is a place of sound health. There is a place that is devoid of sickness. There is a place that is devoid of diseases. There is a place that is devoid of poverty. There is a place where life works. There is a place where marriage works. There is a place where businesses survive. They don't just barely survive. They do well. God says there is that place. And I am taking you away from the environment that you are familiar with. I am taking you to a new place. Now, many people find it difficult to hang on to the promise of God because they cannot visualize it. Mm. And God understands the power of vision. For Abraham to be able to believe God and to be accounted to him for righteousness, he needed a pictorial representation of what God is telling him, of what is possible. What does the future look like in this new life? God had to tell Abraham, for you to be able to succeed in this next level of your life, you need to be able to see, you need to be able to visualize, you need to be able to have a vision of where I'm taking you. And listen to what God did to him. God says, I will take you onto a land that I will show you. 
I will show you the power of vision. Because if Abraham did not see, it would have been difficult to follow. You cannot be bigger than your vision, ladies and gentlemen. You cannot be bigger than your vision. No matter how hard you try, the biggest you are ever going to be is the biggest you can conceive of yourself. If you never see yourself this big, you'll never be this big. Mm -hmm. Remember, there are those who see themselves as grasshopper. They never grew beyond grasshoppers. It, Abraham had to see himself beyond the negative returns in his business. And God had to paint the picture for him clearly because vision indeed is key in the actualization of destiny. Now, in verse 2, hear what the Bible says in verse 2 of Genesis chapter 12. The Bible says, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless everyone who blesses you, and I will curse everyone who curses you. And all the families of the earth will be blessed in you. But the first thing God had to do is he had to paint a picture of what tomorrow looks like. In Genesis chapter 13, verses 14 to 17, God confirmed this vision, this covenant, God confirmed it to Abraham. And now God said, now the Lord has said unto Abraham, get out of your country. And the same thing, all the families of the earth will be blessed. But it is very important to align your vision with the purpose of God for your life. Remember what I said, you cannot be bigger than your vision. But the pursuit of your life that you create a vision around must be aligned with the purpose of God for your life. Now, in far, as far as Abraham is concerned, God, as far as God was concerned with Abraham, it was a done deal. Abraham was going to be blessed, but Abraham needed to see it. In the same vein, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what plan is ahead of you. You are starting a new project, and everybody is saying it cannot work. The greatest limitation you are going to have is yourself. Our Kelly sang that if I can see it, then I can be it. Now, forget about who sang that song. Listen to the word. This was an inspired song. And the song says, if you can see it, you can be it. Now, whatever it is, it is for you. Whatever it means to you, you have to see it. Now, you want to build a school. You want to start a school project. First of all, see it. Create a vision around it. What, what does that school look like? You want to start a family. What does a happy family look like? You want to start a new, a new, a new training program. You want to acquire yourself. You, you, you want to train yourself in some capacity. Ask yourself, what does that capacity look like? What value does it bring? What do you see yourself operating in when that capacity is acquired? So it's critical. You must see. You must see to be it. However, whatever you see, whatever vision you have, whatever you are pursuing, is only successful to the extent that it aligns with the purpose of God for your life. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 11, the Bible was talking about what was going to happen at the end of the world. And the Bible was saying, you need to see, you need to understand how the world was made and how the world will be judged. And then I said in verse 11, if you are aware, when you see how all these things are going to happen, then what kind of person are you supposed to be in your holy conversation and in your murder? What this means is that your vision must drive your behavior. Mm. Your vision must drive your behavior. I want you to know that. Your vision must drive your behavior. If you see yourself as a chicken, you behave as one. Mm. If you see yourself as, as a liar, you behave as one. I don't know how many of us have watched the children a movie called Mowgli. Mowgli is the story of a baby that was raised by wolves. So Mowgli was a human child, but he crawled on all fours. And as far as Mowgli was concerned, he was a wolf. How, how you see yourself will determine your behavior. Mowgli was a human child. He, he grew up to become a full-grown man, but he was walking on all fours because 
the, his behavior was not driven by his externality. His behavior was driven by the vision of himself. In the same vein, there are many people who are failing today, not because it's impossible for them to succeed, but because they cannot see a vision of success for themselves. Mm. They cannot see a vision of success for themselves. So mm. the vision you see for yourself will determine the kind of investment you make, mm. the kind of companies you keep, the kind of relationships you establish, the kind of places you go, the kind of risks that you take in life. There are people, if they knew that opportunities will come to them to be who they are today, there are things they would not have done 20 years ago. Mm. There are people who did bad things 15 years ago, but it's catching up with them today very unfortunately. Mm. There are relationships that people had Many years ago, because they did not see a clear vision of what their future looked like. They had a limited vision of themselves. So they behaved true to type, true to the limited vision that they have. When the Bible says where there is no vision, people perish, it is very real. Also, where there is a misaligned vision, not only will people perish, people will fall sick, people will become sickly. When you have a misaligned vision, it stagnates your movement, it stunts your growth. Therefore, your vision of yourself must define your behavior, must define the things you do, the kind of places you go, the kind of people you hang out with, the kind of books you read, the kind of life you live, the kind of things you do, the kind of churches you go, whatever you do will be a function of the vision that you see of yourself. Now, Abraham experienced delay. And this is something that I want, I want each of us to pay attention to. Abraham experienced delay despite the firm and sure promises of God directly to him. But we must understand that according to Genesis chapter 18, verse 7, the Lord was passionate about his relationship with Abraham. As a matter of fact, the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that in which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely, surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed by him. This was God reassuring Abraham. Hmm. However, vision can be challenged. Hmm. The fact that you have a vision doesn't mean it's a smooth sail. The first challenge to your vision is going to come from within yourself. Because you're going to be scared. You're going to be afraid that isn't this vision too big? Is this vision realizable? Can this happen? Or am I just daydreaming? Mm -hmm. Now, the first challenge you're going to have to your vision is going to be yourself telling yourself, I don't think I'm good enough. I don't think I'm strong enough. I don't think I'm intelligent enough. I don't think the prospect of this business is good enough. But you have to see a vision. You have to be consistent in the pursuit of your vision. You, you don't have to allow externalities to determine your behavior around your vision. As far as God was concerned, as far as God was concerned with Abraham, it was a done deal. The same thing God is telling you tonight, that you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to look at yourself so small. You don't have to be so negative about your own capabilities. You don't have to be negative about what God can do with you. You don't have to be negative about repenting, about returning to the church after you have fallen away, after you have backslid, after the scandal has broken about your life. Everybody has run you down, but now you have repented. You have put your life back together. God himself wants to put you back together. He says, he says, whosoever comes unto me, I will in no wise cast out. God is not ready to cast you out, to throw you away just because you make a mistake or two. As much as we do not want to diminish or minimize the errors of life or the hurt that people feel, the intent of God is healing. The intent of God is healing. God wants to heal you more than he wants to punish you. Both the hurt and the hurting. God wants to heal. That's what God wants to do. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid. Don't run away. Don't be so ashamed that you cannot get back to the old estate where the Lord has, has, has saved you. God, as a matter of fact, God wants to restore you 
high above the height from which you are falling. Now, how many are we God's children? God is not ready to throw away any of his children to the devil. Mm. Hell was not made for you. Mm. Hell was not made for you. Hell was made for Satan and his angels. Mm. You don't have to go there. All you need to do is do like the prodigal son. Say, I will arise, I will go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against you, against God and against you. And I'm not worthy to be called your son anymore. Just make me one of your servants. Believe me very strongly, uh, God will not make you one of his servants. He will clothe you with a beautiful cloth. He will put a ring in your, in, your, in your finger and he will slaughter a cow for you. Because this son was lost and now is found. Hallelujah. Amen. So do not be afraid to envision yourself back in God's kingdom. Do not be afraid to envision yourself back in your ministry. No matter how much you're falling away. Some people have fallen away so much that they just resign themselves to the oppression of evil. You don't have to remain in the camp of the enemy. Come home. Come home. There is a songwriter that says, come home. The, the, those who are weary, come home. Because softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, oh sinner, come home. Come home. We can talk about success all we want. We can talk about the vision of success, the vision of prosperity, the vision of greatness. The greatest success you're going to have is the success of your relationship with God. A balanced, solid, pure, righteous, holy, solid, steady relationship with, with your maker. If you cannot fix that, everything else is vanity upon vanity. Now, let me go back to the alignment of vision something happened to Abraham here and it happens to many people as we travel on the journey of vision. Abraham's vision became misaligned. In Genesis chapter 15, Genesis chapter 15, when you read from verses 2 to 6, Genesis chapter 15, verses 2 to 6, hear what happened to Abraham here. And Abraham said, Lord God, what will thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house, this Eliezer of Damascus, is going to be my child? And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one that is born in my house is now my heir. Verse 4, And behold, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham, saying, This shall not be thine heir. For he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thine here. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now towards heaven and tell the stars, if you are able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall your seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you must understand something about vision. Something about vision. Very critical. Life tested Abraham's faith in the most cruel manner. Yeah. This was a guy that God said, look, I painted a picture for you of what I'm going to make out of you. God says the whole world is going to be blessed by you. But the man became such an old man. 10 years past, 20 years past, 30 years past, 40 years past, no child. For a man who was going to be the father of nations. Sometimes... The promises that God has given you upon which you have anchored your vision. Remember we said your vision of your life must be anchored on the purpose of God for your life. The purpose of God upon which you anchor your life may not seem to be coming to pass in the first year, in the second year. It may not work with your timeline. The actualization of vision, of purpose, and the path of vision may not, may not come to pass within your timeline. But something that is sure is that God is ever true to his word. What happened here? Abraham lost sight of the vision. After many years, it became extremely difficult for Abraham to continue to sustain the vision. Abraham said, Lord, look at what I'm saying. I know you are God, but it's been 40 years. I have no child. So the only child I can see here is this my house boy, this manager. Is it this boy that is going to inherit everything I have? His vision was misaligned. Hmm. A misaligned vision is counterproductive. When your vision is misaligned with the vision of God for your life, you're going to walk in a direction that will not lead you to the place of destiny. 
I don't know if you've heard the, the scripture that says the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. The way the Lord orders your step is for you to keep on the path of vision that is aligned with his purpose for your life. As long as you walk on the path of vision that is aligned with the purpose of God, no matter how long it takes, you will get to the sure breakthrough. Mm. But if you are disillusioned along the way, disillusionment comes when, when there is a delay in the actualization of promise, delayed expectations. The Bible says, it says hope deferred makes the heart sick. When hope is deferred, it makes the heart sick. When you have an expectation and you keep hoping it's going to happen, you keep believing, you keep planning, you keep trusting, you keep taking steps, you keep investing, and it doesn't seem to be happening, you become weary. Hmm. You're, you become emotionally weak, emotionally ill. This was the experience of Abraham. It was an emotional burn, brownout. It was an emotional brownout. He just found it difficult to continue on the path of the vision that God had given him. See what God did. God had to take him outside. God had to take him outside one more time. He said, let me refresh your vision. Let me realign your vision. Let me show you. Maybe if you see it again, your faith will come back to life. And God took him outside and said, let's go outside. Take a look up. Lift your eyes up. What do you see? Say, I see the stars. Tell me again what you see. Say, I see the stars. He said, count them. He said, Lord, I can't count. Why can't you count? There are too numerous to count. Mm -hmm. God said, very good. Now that you can see one more time, you see those stars as numerous as they are, that you cannot count them in the same way. Mm -hmm. Your blessing is going to be so much. Your children are going to be so much that nobody will be able to count them. The thing with ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to encourage somebody tonight. Maybe you are suffering, you are in a state of emotional brownout around the vision that God has given you, around the project around which you have invested your life. It doesn't seem to be coming to pass. Do not lose your vision. Take a look one more time and see the ability of God to come through on his word. It may seem like the externalities are not congruent with, with your direction. It may seem that the environmental factors, the, the social, economic, political, legal, legislative ecology may not support the position that you have taken in God. But God has asked me to encourage you, do not despair. Do not be disillusioned. Look at that vision one more time. Do not look at the negativities around you. Look at the capacity of God to come through on his word. Can somebody say amen out there? Amen. Hmm. Now, in Genesis chapter 15, verses 4 to 6, God had to help Abraham to realign his vision in order to ensure it comes to pass. If your vision is misaligned, it will not be the fault of God. It will not be the inability of God. It will not be because your plans are not working. It will be because you lost your rhythm. It will be because you lost your vibes. You need to get your rhythm back. You need to get your groove back on the path of vision. Once you get your groove back and you are realigned in the place of vision, you are back on track. The Bible says, faithful is he who has begun a good work in you and he will complete it in the name of Jesus. I'm not, I don't know what work God has begun with you. I don't know what project God has begun with you. You may seem disillusioned right now. Don't be, because faithful is he who has begun a good work in you. He will complete it. God never fails, and he's not going to begin failing with you. No matter how many scriptures you quote, no matter how many scriptures you quote, if your vision is not aligned with God's purpose for your life, you won't go far. Hmm. I'm going to take that again. No matter how many scriptures you quote for yourself, if your vision is not aligned with God's purpose for your life, you won't go far. The only thing worse than being blind is having no vision. The only thing worse than being blind is having no vision. If you look at Genesis chapter 30, verses 31 to 40, even animals are conceived by the power of what they saw. Now, Jesus endured the cross because of the vision of the future that he had. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, 
the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and now he's sitting at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus didn't sit at the right hand of the throne of God at the beginning of the journey. He sat there. He saw himself there. I remember Stephen, where Stephen was being stoned, Stephen said, I see the heavens open, and I see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of God. That's where Jesus is. But Jesus didn't jump from the first day he was born to the right hand of God. He had the vision. He stood by it. But there were trials along the way. There were difficulties along the way. There was disillusionment along the way. There were adverse economics along the way. There was, there was difficult health situation along the way. There were scandals of ministry along the way. But he focused. He focused. He focused. Remember, one of Jesus' finest men was a thief. Was corrupt. The, the account, the, guy, the most corrupt guy in the pack, Jesus put in charge of the treasury. For the one who made the heavens and the earth, that was a big scandal. Today, if, if a general overseer has one of his assistant general overseers uh, discovered to be a thief, that would be a scandal. But the Bible says Jesus endured all of these scandals. He endured all of these difficulties because of what he saw, because of the joy that was set before him. I want to encourage somebody tonight. I don't know what your own joy is. I don't know what is set before you. Endure. Endure. The moment of your testimony is coming. Do not despair. The moment of your joy is coming. The moment of your testimony is coming. And it's almost here. Endure. Case study number two. Case study number two. And we're going to make this real quick because of our time. Case study number two is Jacob. In Genesis chapter 30, verses 31 to 44. It's a very long scripture. But I'm just going to paraphrase because of our time. But when you have time, when you, after this program, just take time to read Genesis chapter 30. Read from verse 31 to verse 44. It is the story of Jacob in the house of his uncle Laban. Jacob had labored for seven years for one girl. And he was duped. He was given the wrong girl. And Jacob says, and Laban says, you want that girl? You got to labor another seven years. That was original 419. That was an unethical way to deal with someone working for you. It was a dishonest business that was meant to oppress and to deprive Jacob. But here's what, what happened. God gave Jacob a vision in the night that I'm going, there's going to be a wealth transfer, that I'm going to transfer the wealth of labor to you. You don't need to fight this man. 14 years is a long time. No, don't worry. Do the first seven. Do the second seven. I'm, I'm going to, I, I would make the things work because God showed him, he saw the oppression of this man, the unjust way he was being treated. Now, I'm going to read from verse 34. Um, let, let me read very quickly from verse 31 and just give us a, 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 a brief, a brief uh, uh, peek into what Jacob did. And Jacob said, and Laban said, what shall I give you? Jacob said, do not give me anything, but this is one thing I'd like you to do for me. If you would do it for me, I will do it. I will again fill and keep your flock. If you do what I say, I will, I will do your business. I will manage your business one more time. Verse 32, here's what I will do. I will pass through all your flock today. I will remove from there all the speckled and spotted cattle. And all the brown cattle among the sheep, and the spotted and speckled among the goats, and all of such shall be my hire. Now, Jacob says, this is what I will take as payment for my work. So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come, when it shall come for my hire before thy face, every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the sheep, that shall be counted slowly with me. This is what Jacob did. I don't know if you've seen a spotted goat before. I have never seen it since I was born. I have never seen a spotted goat before. I've never seen a speckled sheep before. I've never seen a brown sheep before. Well, I've seen a brown goat, you know, but I've never seen a brown sheep. Perhaps 
those who are very close to agrarian society and livestock, maybe they've seen brown sheep. There's probably brown sheep somewhere in the world. But speckled and spotted goats, I have never seen it before, except in children's cartoon. I've never seen spotted goat. But here's Jacob, because God gave him a vision. God gave him a vision. He was bold. And he said, I'm going to walk with this vision that God has given me. Because of his oppression, God showed this to him in a dream in the night. There are some of you out there, you are considering one business or the other. God is going to speak to you tonight. God is going to give you revelation of wealth. Do not be afraid to take a step. If it is God, it is good. The Bible says every good and perfect gift come from above, from the Father of light, in whom there is neither variableness nor shadow of turning. There is somebody listening to me here tonight. God is going to give you a, in a vision of the night, secret to the next level of your life mm -hmm. in the mighty name of Jesus. So we need to move. When God gives this revelation, do not wait. Do not. The Bible said the vision, it said, it said write the vision, make it plain, that they may run that reads it. When, you, when, when the Lord gives you a vision, run with it. When God makes it clear to you, run with it. Jacob took a big risk. And that is what happens when you work with God. You take a big risk. David took a big risk. The Lord had, had dealt with the lion and the bear with him. So he took a chance with Goliath. Jacob saw this dream in the night. He could have said, oh, it's, it's an ordinary dream. I've never seen a speckled goat before. I've never seen a spotted goat before. But he took a risk on God. And God never fails. The stimulus, gentlemen, what we find out what happened was that when Jacob was feeding the sheep, the Bible says he puts spots on a stick and he puts it in front of the goats that were pregnant. And anytime they're drinking, they look at the stick and the color on the skin on the body of the stick transfers miraculously into the color of the baby in the womb of the livestock. This can only happen by a divine operation. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, vision is powerful. Now, let, let's, let's see how, how this works. Vision is the art of seeing what is invisible to others. According to Jonathan Swift, he says vision is the art of seeing what's invisible to the others. Now, Laban has been in business before Jacob was born. But he had never seen, he never saw a speckled goat before. He never knew about the capability of goat giving back to the color of the stick in front of them. That is the power of vision. Other people around you might be shouting and whining and, and, and moaning about the dead economy, but you must see greatness. You must see opportunity. They might be saying there is no investment in this country. You may see opportunity right there. There might be people, every problem that comes in this life is an opportunity for you to provide solution. Solution is the value for which life compensates you. That is how wealth comes. The solution, the problems you solve is what people pay for. That is the value for which people pay you. What problem are you solving? Now, here it's very important. It's very important. You must be solving a problem. You must see what others do not see. If you want to follow the crowd, some people want to do only the business that other people have done before. They want to do the kind of ministry that others have done before. You have to be bold. You have to see where others don't see. Two people travel to India as the story goes. One got there and saw an army of beggars and said, this is such a poor country, I can't come back here. And he went away. See, look at hundreds and hundreds of children without shoes. And he went away. Another person visited the same country and he was greeted by the same army of beggars at the airport. And the hundreds and hundreds of people without shoes. And he said, wow, mm. what a market for shoes. Mm -hmm. That is what happens. Two people exposed to the same situation, but they saw different possibilities. This is how God wants you to think. This is how God wants you to operate. Vision is seeing what others cannot see. Pursue even animals had their future shaped by their vision, where they spent time seeing. Jacob put those sticks in front of those animals, and they began to look, and their future was shaped by the stick they looked. The stick, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to hold it here tonight, 
so that we can have other things to talk about next time by the grace of God. There are other parts to this topic. I'd like to hold it here. And I believe the God of heaven that as you, as you have a vision of your future, as you, as you pursue the vision with imagination, as you think about it, as you visualize it, as you plan with it, as you apply the wisdom of God, destiny will be delivered into your hands Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I don't know if somebody's out there tonight, you're hearing me, and you'd like to say, Reverend, can you please pray with me? I'm not just going to pray just with you. I'm in the mood of prayer myself. And I'd like you to just be in the spirit of prayer as the Lord is speaking tonight because there are lives out there that the Lord wants to turn around. There are lives out there that are visionless. The Lord wants to give you a vision. There are people that their vision have been misaligned. God wants to realign your vision like it did to Abraham. Your life would have been better than the way it is, but you lost your vision. You lost your first estate. God wants to restore you. There are some people that are only following the crowd. They only succeed when others do. They only see what others do. But God said, there is a level of breakthrough that I want to give you. You have to see what nobody else is seeing around you. You have to be able to, uh, to identify the opportunity gaps around you. That nobody is seeing those opportunities. But when you take a look, you will see. You want to say, God, open my eyes to have a vision of tomorrow. Open my eyes to see opportunities that are hidden. Open my eyes to see grace where nobody sees it. Open my eyes to see life where people see death. Open my eyes to see grace where people see punishment. Open my eyes, oh God, to see success where people see failure. Open my eyes to see healing where people see hurt. Open my eyes to see healing where people see sicknesses. Reba kalibro goz kapaliga zantaliga boyegele rakabaza kalagadagada rebra galibra goz kopolika ba shantali braga yegedegede. Lord, open my eyes. Lord, open my eyes tonight. Open my eyes, oh God. Give me a vision of my tomorrow. Give me a vision of my tomorrow. Help me, Jesus, to sustain a vision. Align my vision with yours. A misaligned vision leads you nowhere. Cry to none and say, God, align my vision with your purpose for my life. Align my vision, oh God. Align my vision. Align my vision with your purpose for my life. I do not want to walk in a different tangent from you, Jesus. I do not want the different tangent from you, Jesus. The Bible said there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of destruction. It may seem friendly, it may seem good, it may seem nice, it may seem attractive, it may seem popular, but if it's not the purpose of God for you, it's not going to work. God, align my vision with your purpose for my life. And an aligned vision is sure come to pass. The Bible says, the Bible says concerning Abraham, in blessing and I will bless you. Oh God, align my vision with your purpose for my life. Align my vision with your purpose for my life. Align my vision with your purpose for my life. There are some of you out there, you have lost your vision. You have derailed from your vision. You are going to say, Lord, restore my vision. Realign my vision. Restore my vision. Abraham lost his vision and he began to despair. And he said, Lord, you told me before I was going to have a child, but now it seems I'm never going to have none. It seems that only my servant is going to be my hair. God says, no, 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 that's not the case. Come back, take another look. Take another look. You see those stars out there, as numerous as they are, uncountable as they are, that's what your family is going to be like. I want you to cry to the Lord tonight and say, Father, restore my vision, my vision of success, my vision of breakthrough, my vision of decent family, my vision of successful ministry, my vision of successful business. Restore my vision, the vision of grace that I used to have, the vision of ministry that I used to have, the vision of healing that I used to have, the vision of success that I used to have. Restore Restore my vision, Lord. Every vision that has been lost, I command tonight. Restore to you in the name of Jesus. Everyone listening to me tonight, watching this telecast tonight, that has lost their vision, that has lost their purpose, I restore them to you tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, I restore them to you tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
You can't be bigger than your vision. The bigger your vision, the bigger your, your life is likely to be. You cannot succeed beyond your capacity to dream. You cannot succeed beyond your capacity to envision. Therefore, Lord, I pray tonight, everyone who has difficulty and vision is success. Everyone who is a slave to small dream. Everyone who is a slave to limited vision. I break you free tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree an increase, an enlargement of your vision. I decree an extension of your vision in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord increase your vision. May the Lord increase your vision. May the Lord increase your greatness and comfort you on every side. Only God God given vision will succeed. No matter what negative vision that you pursue, if it is not of God, it's not going to succeed. Jacob succeeded because he followed a God-given vision. I pray tonight, every eye that is blind and cannot see in the spirit, I command that you open to receive God-given vision. In the name of Jesus, every eye that is shut, that cannot see a vision of success for their marriage, a vision of success for their ministry, a vision of success for their business, I declare your eyes open. I command your eyes open. From this moment on forward, receive divine revelation. Revelations, receive divine insight, receive divine vision for your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond that which may ask or imagine according to your power that is resident in us. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' gracious name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you, Reverend Shola Adebawo. God bless you, sir. We appreciate you. Wow. Amen. This is deep. Thank but you. People's comments, a lot of people have been commenting and saying, wow, this is deep. Wow, wow, this is deep. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that God will continue to increase you in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of his word in the name of of Jesus. God has made you a, a godly Amen. influence and you will continue to influence your generation to the glory of his name in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, you are indeed Amen. You are indeed a precious gift to this generation, to our generation. I pray Amen. in the name of Jesus that God will preserve you, preserve your family and your ministry in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, thank Amen. you, thank you everybody Amen. for the life of our Father in the Lord we appreciate you sir we celebrate thank god's grace upon your life thank you. this is deep in fact we god cannot bless you. we cannot finish uh, eating this and like you said that uh, you. we cannot be bigger than our vision wow that is deep that is that, right. that, 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 that's a deep one by the grace of god we're going to convert this to a podcast and share it tomorrow on our podcast platform and uh, we are asking you. Uh, for the permission and also i want to crave your indulgence sir. like you mentioned that uh, you th this is just like uh, part 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 a of uh, of what you have that's in stock. correct so, so i don't know when i know you're busy and like you said that you can't be busier than the holy spirit <laughs> but however that's correct we need to respect your time and also uh, look at the uh, how we can how we can plan for the next that's okay let's do it again we, let's do it again next week friday by the grace of god so that we can quickly follow up and uh, on this teaching and, and take the second part by the grace of god well, we appreciate you we, are, we appreciate you sir god bless you sir and also bless, god bless you bless your family amen and your team pastor Olu F R J. we celebrate you sir <laughs> thank you thank god you god bless you great man amen sir so let me allow reverend to go and relax now i know it's going it's, it's been a busy day uh, reverend god bless you and do have a wonderful night sir thank you my brother i appreciate you and grace and blessings to all our viewers in jesus name amen amen thank you sir thank you sir ah viewers this is deep tonight's teaching is another level is another level that you wouldn't want to miss and i want to appreciate and congratulate every one of you that tuned in with uh, to this live broadcast with us tonight to learn from the feet of the holy spirit i pray for you that everything that you've learned concerning vision 
and your destiny tonight will come to manifestation in the name of Jesus. You will not miss God's purpose for your life in the name of Jesus. Like Reverend mentioned, next week Friday is going to be another session with Reverend Shola Adebawo. And I want you to please mark your calendar and make it a date with the Holy Ghost. It's going to be another wonderful experience by the help of God in the name of Jesus. So our 21 days covenant fasting and prayer program continues tomorrow which is the day 13 and it's going to be a wonderful one we are trying we will be connecting with another god servant uh shortly uh, uh i think okay today is friday that will be next week monday and on tuesday next week is loaded so let us let's allow you but by the grace of god we're going to be having our daily uh prayer devotional podcast on our podcast platform that is www anchor.fm we are on anchor.fm spotify itunes that uh, apple podcast and also available on a uh, teacher and google podcast so you can go to all this platform and search for prayer investment then you have access to all the 21 days uh, fasting and prayer daily devotional uh, uh, guide and i pray for you that as you take step in fulfilling destiny god will assist you in the name of jesus so till i come your way next time Amen. i remain your host chaplain taiwo balogun the lead servant or servant leader of Calatage world outreach a christian faith-based non-profit organization that is commissioned to empowerment and outreach god bless you amen amen thank you sir do have a wonderful evening sir actually yes. you. god bless you sir amen, amen. All right, guys. So let's let's settle down some. We need you to sing this song with us. Listen up, listen up. God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. So oh.